In fact, there was only one time in American history when the fear of refugees wiping everyone out did actually come true, and we'll all be sitting around a table celebrating it on Thursday. <laughs> and, and look, it is absolutely fair. It's fair to be concerned about safety in the wake of these attacks, and it's fair to wonder who we're letting in and what sort of screening system is in place. Unfortunately, many of the people talking about it this week don't seem to have the first idea of what we're doing. Do we know who these people are? No. Are they properly vetted? No. How do you vet them? There's no possible way to vet them. There is virtually no vetting, because there are no databases in Syria. There are no government records. We don't know who these people are. Look, it is difficult to vet people coming out of a war zone, but it's not like we're just letting anyone in. We are the United States of America, not Arizona State. <laughs> because, for the, just for the record here, let me walk you through what our screening process actually is. If you're a refugee, first, you apply through the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, which collects documents and performs interviews. Incidentally, less than 1% of refugees worldwide end up being recommended for resettlement. But if you're one of them, you may then be referred to the State Department to begin the vetting process. At this point, more information is collected. Uh, you'll be put through security screenings by the uh, National Counterterrorism Center, uh, the FBI, and the Department of Homeland Security. And if you're a Syrian refugee, you'll get an additional layer of screening called the Syria Enhanced Review, which may include a further check by a special part of Homeland Security, the USCIS Fraud Detection and National Security Directorates. And don't relax yet, because we've barely even started. <laughs> then you finally get an interview with USCIS officers, and you'll also be fingerprinted so your prints can be run through the biometric databases of the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Department of Defense. And if you make it through all that, you'll then have health screenings, which, let's face it, may not go too well for you, because you may have given yourself a stroke getting through this process <laughs> so far. But if everything comes back clear, you'll be enrolled in cultural orientation classes, all while your information continues to be checked recurrently against terrorist databases to make sure that no new information comes in that wasn't caught before. All of that has to happen before you get near a plane. This process typically takes 18 to 24 months once you've been referred by the UN to the United States. This is the most rigorous vetting anyone has to face before entering this country. No, no terrorist in their right mind would choose this path when the visa process requires far less effort. But, but nevertheless, the House still voted on Thursday to add a few more steps. The House voted 289 to 137 for tougher screening procedures, requiring the FBI director to sign off on each and every refugee. He signs off? On, that is ridiculous. At this point, why don't we just include a pie-eating contest, a spelling bee, and an evening wear portion? <laughs> But the really hard truth here is no one can promise that someone dangerous still might not slip through. And while that risk should not be denied, it also should not be wildly inflated. Let me ask this. If, if you bought a five-pound bag of peanuts uh, and you knew that in the five-pound bag of right. peanuts there were about ten peanuts that were deadly poisonous, would you feed them to your kids? The answer yeah. is no. Yeah. Of, of course it's no. For a start, you should give your kids an actual meal, not a handful of peanuts, <laughs> because they're human children, not circus elephants. But, but second, we wanted to do the math on what he just said. So we bought five pounds of peanuts and we counted them. There are about a thousand nuts in there. So if ten of them are poisoned, Mike Huckabee is essentially suggesting that about one of every 100 refugees is a terrorist. But in reality, of the more than 784,000 refugees admitted to the US since 9-11, only three have been arrested for planning terrorist activities, none of which, by the way, resulted in attacks here. So the actual known ratio of arrested terror suspects to refugees is not one in a hundred, it's one in roughly 261,000. Peanuts themselves have killed far more people in the last decade <laughs> than terrorist refugees. I'll go one step further. Men named Mike have killed more people than terrorist refugees. And I don't